So is it true solid state? Well, let's find out. Now, typically solid state batteries say they can withstand puncture tests, unlike in MC batteries or lithium iron phosphate. Now, after this first puncture, I'm gonna go ahead and let this battery sit for about three minutes and come back. And time is up. Well, so far so good. Not hot and no fire. But like a good Boy Scout, we'll try again. And unfortunately, this Boy Scout's a little rusty on his aim. So at first, if you don't succeed, and there we go. Now, solid state batteries are supposed to be able to withstand puncture tests, which is exactly what we're doing and what I've also seen displayed by Yoshino and some of their tech videos. So far, nothing happening. Now, a video I did see from Yoshino, they did one puncture, but I'd like to go a little beyond that and I'll let this sit a couple more minutes and we'll do a couple more. Now, I do think I saw a puff of smoke in this area, so we'll let it sit and see if it ignites. Well, another three minutes have gone by and no heat and no flame. Now, this is the same battery pouch cell that I took out from it when I disassembled it, but so far, not really willing to catch on fire. Although now I can definitely smell some kind of an aroma or something that is very toxic. So it might be on its way. Maybe we'll just help it along here. Now I've definitely got four complete punctures all the way through this. Now sure, it may not be as good as a bow and arrow, which I found that a lot more fun than what I'm doing. But since Yoshino used pretty much a nail, I figured I'd kind of duplicate the test. And Still not much happening. How about one more hole for good measure? Now I don't know about you, but I'm becoming impatient. And since I don't have an arrow, I'm gonna use this knife. Go ahead and chop this up a little bit and we'll see what we can find inside. As you can see, now it's starting to smoke as those cells are basically kind of shattered from where I cut this which basically it's causing all of them to short circuit against each other. But I will do a clean disassembly here in just a minute or two. That way you can see actually each one of these individually, and then we'll see if there really is any kind of a solvent or maybe some kind of a polymer in there. But I'm assuming this should catch on fire eventually. I'm just having to help it along much more than I thought I would. Oh, and there it goes. Now, because this pouch is already cut open, it allows the pressure to escape. So it's not gonna kind of explode out to the sides and more of a violent reaction because it's not under any kind of pressure since we've already opened up the casing. But it definitely puts out a lot of heat and I can't imagine that's very good for the environment. Now, like the last video, this retains a lot of heat for a long time, about 20 minutes that will be warm enough to at least warm your hands and maybe then some, as this steel plate is hot enough to probably cook an egg on. Now one test somebody told me to do was to hook this up directly to DC charging, as a lithium iron phosphate cell would expand if you were to hook this up versus solid state should stay compressed such as it is. Now I'm charging this at 14 watts with a five volt outlet. So I'll come back in about 25 minutes and see if there's any difference. And 25 minutes later, nothing exciting to report. So, is it solid state? Is it semi-solid state? Let's try another pouch. This one we're gonna fully dissect open and hopefully not short circuit it so it burns up in my hand. So now we have to carefully remove this aluminum cover or aluminum, depending on where you're from and how you would like to say it. So far, so good, no sparks and no flames. And step one complete. Now inside here is much like a bunch of waffles all put together. There's a lot of layers in here, maybe more like an onion. So we'll carefully dissect this part and get more of this aluminum cover off. And we are now looking at the white separator and also listening to the background music of a wood chipper. And there we go, so far so good. 
Now this clear looking plastic is used as a separator and goes in between each anoid and cathoid or basically the little black sheets that we'll see inside here in a minute. Now this is a little bit like dissecting a bomb. It's still charged and ready to go up in flames at really any time. So we'll try to avoid that. I also decided to use my own separator from that steel plate that I happen to have a highly charged battery on. So what we are looking at is either an anoid or a cathoid, that black looking thing. And the white sheet is a separator which goes in between all of them. Now the anoids are the ones we have to be careful with because, oh, like I said, you have to be careful with these ones because they are the ones that hold at least a lot of the charge. And what we do is not panic at the moment while we try to salvage this and hopefully not have it all go up in flames. Well, and there we go. And now that little copper sheet is nice and hot. As we continue listening to the wood chipper, which reminds me I have some yard work to do, we'll continue dissecting this. And this is the one that got a little bit hot, so can't really use that as an example. But right there, that anoid looked like it had some kind of evaporation going on. So we'll continue down to find some other sheets that we can use. That would be our cathoid and remove the separator again. That's an anoid sheet right there with some kind of evaporation again, which I don't think polymers are supposed to exactly evaporate like that, but solvents can. So is this more of a semi-solid state battery? Which honestly, I don't know because this would be the first solid state battery I've ever taken apart since they are still new but supposedly they're not supposed to have a liquid medium. It's supposed to have some type of a polymer or some maybe type of gel at most, but you can definitely see something that evaporates and goes away. And that there is a copper sheet that has the graphite and lithium on it, which I'll show you what that looks like in a couple minutes when you place it in water. We'll keep separating some more of these. Try not to burn up our battery and some more evaporation, which again, I've never claimed to be a battery expert. There are things that I'm really good at, but there are things I'm still learning on. And this would definitely be one of those things I'm learning is there's a lot of evaporation in between these, which makes it look like it's somewhat of a liquid inside here if you added this all together as one pouch cell, which I'm gonna remove these and put those somewhere safer. So far, we're doing pretty good and not having any sparks or which I spoke too soon, but this is one of those copper sheets, the anoid, which these are the ones that always catch fire and produce a lot of energy. Now it has a lot of heat coming off of it and that's actually pretty toxic. I'm gonna move away. As I move this, look how much heat just happened to go through that and onto that towel, which these towels are actually kind of special. They're not really designed to catch on fire. Now the challenge is, is to see if we can make it through each one of these layers without actually catching the rest of it on fire. But again, I spoke too soon, which that's about over. So we're going to go ahead and let that just burn up real quick, which will take a second or two. And look how that just kind of spreads all over that. Now again, remember I mentioned the towel. That towel will not catch on fire. It'll burn but it's not actually supposed to combust and turn into a big ball of flames like this battery is. So, kind of a cool thing, we actually use those in the operating room. They're specifically designed just in case there's a fire, the patient gets minimal harm, if any. So we'll go ahead and douse this with some water, and we'll wait a few seconds as this continues to burn. I will show you another cool test here before we finish up. But what do you think of those towels? Pretty cool, right? Okay, now this is one of the anoid sheets. We're gonna place that in there and look how it reacts to water as that thing is charged and eventually it starts to give off a nasty smell, which I have my head away from here as much as possible and I'm gonna step away for a minute. And now all of the graphite and lithium have come off of this and you're left with that copper sheet. Now, in my opinion, this didn't act like a lithium iron phosphate cell. What are your thoughts?